You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stroman. And we love to improve your home and improve your life and keep those bad guys away, darn it. You know, darn every... bad guys. You know, my neighborhood, which is a nice, you know, sort yeah. of middle class neighborhood. You've had some bad things. We had a couple of break-ins where one car pulled up to two houses in the middle of the night and... They, you know, five guys in the car, two guys per house, one getaway driver. Really? Elderly folks. They no. staked them out apparently for for a couple of weeks. Right? No. Cause, and people kept saying we saw, you know, in the police report, we saw people there that didn't look like they were from this neighborhood. Oh, no. And basically, you know, held them in their bedroom and they, bo- you know, tied no. them up. Yeah, it was so scary. And then all of a sudden... I see this rash of alarm signs going sure. up around the neighborhood because everybody gets really scared. Are they okay? Do the people? Yeah, people are okay, yeah. But, but the, I mean, but it things were scares taken. the heck out oh, of you, yeah. obviously, right? And I mean, they stole things. They stole everything. They well, that's a home invasion, up. right? That's and it. The good news is is that is less frequent than burglaries, right. you know. Most of the burglaries happen, um, well, it could mostly happen when we're not home, right. you know. That's but it. it. But people are testing if we're home. And so they might they might come, like, in the middle of the day, to see if someone is home, right? Because right. most burglars don't want to be confronted. They're no, little they cowards, they right? Wanna, yeah, they want to go and, and not be. Yeah, you know, and the and the best time to do that is during the middle of the well, day when everybody's well, at work. Well, wait a minute. Right? I'm going to give you a quiz. Oh, okay. I, I accept your challenge, <laughs> like I said before. I think you already have the answer. No. But let's. We're going to ask you okay. as you're listening. When I mean, when and how and where can you make sure your home is the most safe? So okay. let's. This is the home security quiz. When do most burglaries occur? And you kind of already answered it. In the day, in the middle of the night, or in the evening? I said day. Am you I said right? day, and you are right yes. because uh, it. You know, in the cover of darkness, like what you what happened in your neighborhood, that is less frequent. You know, according to the FBI, you know, um, with a known time of day, it's sixty percent takes place. Uh, in daylight, right? It's actually, you know, commercial structures uh, more more often in, in nighttime. Interesting. Okay. okay. Cause they, yeah, because they know people aren't going to be there. Yeah. Gotcha. So what would you say is the most common place for one of these bad guys to get in? Okay. The roof? No, that's Santa. A doors and windows or a tunnel into the basement? I say doors and windows. You're right on. Yes, I am. So because tunneling and roof drops, you know, or may get burglars into museums. Too and much makes, labor. They it's, don't it's want good to, in movies. It looks great. It looks on, great, yeah, you yeah. know, especially if Matt Damon's in there. Or with that, or Tom Cruise coming I'm, down wait, the Matt, line. No, Matt Damon. Stop it. <laughs> How dare you bring onto another <laughs> man in this room? <laughs> Sorry. I just had, I just, Matt Damon. He is great. I just saw. I like them apples. I just saw we got a zoo. We bought a zoo. It was so good. Oh, Have isn't you seen that great? That? Oh, the, my yeah. goodness. That yeah. was good. Well, anyway. I so, cried a little. But you're right. Yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise coming down like that. Uh, no, which... Any of that. But no, residential thieves are kind of. They're not really as, well, they're not as handsome, and they're not as smart, yeah. and they look for the easy entry, and so that is going to be a door and a window. So okay. check out your garage door. Check out the open windows or the side entry hidden from the streets, right? right? right. Okay. Those are, those are okay. Now, what is the most common way of forcing through that front door? Removing it from the hinges, kicking it open, or cutting a hole in it? I'd say just kick it on open. You're right. They just, they like to use their feet. It's all about speed, and they try to get a door off its hinges or slicing it through. It's going to take too much time. By the way, and if it's, a, if it's a cheesy lock, it's very easy to kick a door open. And fast. Fast and fast. easy. Boom. Boom. By the way, in this robbery thing that happened, the day before that I was talking about my neighbor, with sure, the two sure. houses right. the day before someone did that they, they pulled up in it. the middle of the day came up and just and they have it on camera by the no. way the guy was so brazen they, he came up and he just kicked the door open did it walked did in grabbed run. the tv walked away done and then said okay i'm gonna come back then again no, this was a different house oh, different. this was next oh. door to the two that oh, were robbed gosh. like it was a horrible did they ever get these guys no Oh my gosh! No. And they have the guy on camera, and they didn't get him. And, still. and how? And where was the camera? It was a, it was a, it home, was a security. home security camera thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, that front door, you know, you want to make sure that it's a good door, and that um, you want that a someone bolt. that it can't just be kicked open. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, all right. So now here's another question: When it comes to door locks, you were mentioning that which strike plate setup you think is the most secure? Now it's a little more complicated than the multiple choice here. Is it the kind that's secured with two-inch screws and two four-inch nails into the door jam? Now, don't answer yet, so think about that. Uh Glued to a series of magnets using heavy-duty construction adhesive. That doesn't sound very good. I don't know. That's terrible. Secured with popsicle sticks. (laughs) Or secured with four three-inch screws into the door jam. I'm saying three. So you think that secured... Secured with three-inch screws into the door jam. Four three-inch screws. Secured with four three-inch screws. You are right. I am four and oh. 
by the you way. You are a winner. Thank and people you. People like you. I love because, your work too. Thank you. <laughs> because a heavy duty strike plate will provide the most protection, but only if it is secured properly, right? Okay, yeah. So there's no need to get too high science here. The longer the screw, the, the more, better yeah, it is. The farther it's going to penetrate the door jam. And guess what? That guy is going to kick the door and hopefully going to break a knee. Would be my good plan. He might get the plantar fasciitis. I and hope then so. He'll be hobbling I hope that he's in the hospital. Like I was. He's he's going to be bedridden for life. I, I hope, hope so. so. Yeah. Not that we're thinking bad thoughts no. for the bad guys, but well, we kind of are. Yeah. Um, what, where is the safest place to keep a spare key? Now I am guilty of this, but I'm not going to tell you where I put okay, it. Right. Is is it the safest place to put a spare key in a planter? Mm-hmm. Um, under the doormat, yeah. even though we always close our show by saying the key is under the mat. We wouldn't necessarily do that. Well, but we're going to rename it today. Well, we just say that just because it's a friendly thing to say. Yeah. Or is it the safest place to put a spare key in a neighbor's house? I'm going neighbor's house. Guess what? What? You are right. Five and oh. Yay. And our new phrase at the end of the show, the keys in the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't really have a good doesn't ring to it. doesn't have the same feel, does it? It, does, it just feels like we're, we're all we're living in a- We're back to a time like the 50s when Beaver Cleaver was on. See, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, the key is, well, we don't really want to have a key. No. No, we, yeah. So basically, while hiding a key outside your house can be safe if you get creative, like it's taped to a high up climbable tree bench. Right. Or branch, or, you know, all that stuff really- um, the best place, according to the crime fighters, is with a trusted neighbor. Sure. Okay. And and I have gone to friends' house, and they said to come over, and they weren't there, and I I would look in the usual places. Right. And I found their keys before. Good idea. So it's probably not a good thing. No, to that's do. not a good no, idea. No. All right. So where should um, outdoor lighting be the brightest? Um, at the perimeter of the property. Yeah. At the entry points. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or on the roof. Uh, B entry points. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. I think so, because at the perimeter, that's still, I mean, you, it, the, we want to get the guy who's kicking in the door. Yeah. If it's way back at the perimeter by yeah. the mailbox, yeah, yeah. That, that you're not going to see the guy, no. right? Yeah. A lot of the, and very few burglars are going to come in f- through the roof. I. Yeah. 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 yeah no. And the perimeter, you know, we want to have nice lighting. It's going to look great to see your trees lit and all that stuff, especially when companies come And the perimeter lighting is only to so, so you can see in silhouette the guy taking your TV away. <laughs> That's the only reason to have nice looking lighting. <laughs> he was a, a rotund man, I think, in the silhouette. <laughs> yeah, but if you have sufficient bright illumination, you know, not only will you be able to, see, you'll be able to see the threat, sure. but the would-be thieves might kind of say, you know what? I don't want to be on on show. I don't, no. I'm a little nervous with the lights. By right? the way, just to remind you, not to rub it in, I am sure. six and zero oh at this time. You are answers. awesome. You. <laughs> right. Okay, number seven. All right, what is the most common way of uh, people reducing the effectiveness of an alarm system? Now, you guys have an alarm system. Yes, we do. Are you using the alarm system? I am system? now. Okay. So, but there were times that maybe you didn't turn it on. I wouldn't do it. Because you forgot? I just didn't do it. I forgot. Oh, well, yeah. You know, or you just kind of trusted that things are going to be okay. That's right. Okay. So, guess, so the answer is what? What do you think? The most common way people reduce the safetiness of their alarm system by neglecting to display the sign, like, uh-huh. hey, we are protected by Joe Schmo Company, yeah, yeah, by yeah. turning it off when they're home during the day, or by setting the code to a birthday or anniversary. See, I, I think it's, and I know this because I talked to the alarm company guy when he came yeah. to redo my alarm, it's the signs. The signs are the advertisement to the folks that are driving around looking for houses. You are right again. I can't take this. See, I would have thought it was- Seven and oh? I, I would have thought that it was turning it off when you're home. Right. But but tell me what they said, the well, signs. They said to me that, that the majority of the-, the do, you know, thieves don't the like thieves it. don't. If they see that there are signs of an alarm company, that's going to be the they'll house they'll, they'll the, pass. They'll go to the next one. Yeah, it's just obvious. It's like a billboard that we have protection versus the house next door. And that's and that's why a lot of times people will just buy a sign. That's true. And may not even have. They may protection. not, but who? But the guy and gal who are robbing folks <laughs> don't know that now, do they? Uh-uh. Oh, so it's all about you know, kind of creating barriers. So I'd I say agree. what layers so that they're you're not their number one choice. That's right. Right. It's like so, having a beware of rabid dog sign, and then you've got like a little schnauzer. You well, know, who, see, they don't know. Yeah. Or it's also like our pond. You know, we're trying to protect our koi. We have layers of protection from those raccoons and the dreaded blue heron. Sure. So it's you, working, isn't it? It's working so yeah. far. Right. Our koi are doing great. Seven and zero. Oh. Continue, okay. please. <laughs> All right. Uh, where should you store the alarm passcode? Uh oh. 
All right? Because that's the other thing is we all have so many passwords. Gosh, do we have passwords, right? How do you remember your email password and your this your website password and your da-da-da-da? But now, where do you put your alarm pass uh-huh. code? Do you uh-huh. put it in a safe deposit box? Do you put it very close to the keypad? Yep. Do you put it as far away from the keypad as possible? Well, knowing me, if I put it in the safe deposit box, I wouldn't remember the code to that either. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to rule that out. Not close to the keypad, because then if they have you at gunpoint, they can tell you to open it up because they know it's oh. there. I would say C, very far from the keypad. You're, you're right. Eight and O. <laughs> you're doing what great. The heck? You're a very safe person. That's right. Because some people, you know, like you say, some people might tape it next to the keypad, and that would be kind of scary. Someone is, you know, sure saying. Well, that's why the alarm companies have these these things where they can do. You can plug in a false code that. Mm-hmm stops the alarm from ringing but secretly sends the message to the police so uh, they come anyway. So one more question. Yes, How ma'am. should you mark your valuables for identification? By engraving your social security number? That doesn't sound, I don't know. By engraving your driver's license or you shouldn't? I would have to say driver's license because you're not supposed to give away your uh, social security number. You're right. You're right. Really? You did it. Eight and oh. You did it. And you here's did it. why, because I, I just went through this because of the scare of the burglary in my neighborhood, which is what awareness is all about. So folks out there in, in radio drivers, listening land, yeah. I'm glad that you heard this because it should make a difference. And driver's license is the choice because it's not so easy to impersonate you that way. I love that. Anyway, and hopefully by the way, no one would want to be me as a driver. I think, I my think record they would. is. And well, by the one more question, yeah. who should know when you're out of town? Everyone on Twitter and Facebook, your neighbors or no one? No one. I think your neighbors is good. Your neighbors is good because they're Ooh, that's, your neighbors. Oh, no. Your neighbors. I got one wrong. Anyway, you're listening to Home Wizards. No. The fun continues. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole. And check us out at yourhomewizards.com. 8 and 1.